I have another Formula D car that's rotting away for you. I thought I would share it with you guys and tell you the story of this thing. So, over a decade ago, this car was built for Formula D. It has run in multiple Formula D events. I think it was Formula D Road Atlanta, and it has a top 32 sticker from Texas. And if we look around the car, I bet we can find, normally the tech stickers are, oh God, I got caught on it, on the cage somewhere. Um, it has old, gross Lexan and stuff on it. This car has been around. So this car was originally built by Chris Ward and used by him in Formula D. And then after a while, I'm not sure how long, he decided to sell it. And a friend of mine, True and Kevin, I guess two friends of mine, bought it and then brought it to Texas. And this is where it lived. It was super janky because it had just been kind of thrown back together for a resale. So they did a lot of stuff to fix it and change it up. Some of the things that were like terrifying when we first got it was it had these offset rack stick basers and they were installed backwards. So when we tried to originally drive it down the street, uh, like over 40, it would just like start whipping the steering wheel back and forth wildly and almost killed you. And basically it was, it was a solid car. It just had, when you toss things back together, uh, there's issues there that need to be sorted, but it's a competition car and they're meant to be taken apart and stuff. So that's perfectly fine. And then it was two JZ. We used to call it the rocket coffin cause it was so janky and was so fast. It was so dangerous and stuff until it got put back together pretty well. And then they had it for a little while, but my friends, but it blew up tires really fast. And I don't know why they sold it, but they sold it to one of my pro-am drivers. And then my pro-am driver drove it in Texas, Tyler Katulik, for quite some time. He painted it, all the paint fell off. This is tons of mineral wells, rocks and dirt. It's probably about eight inches deep. Uh, the car was like one of those back half things with the two F fenders on the back where the whole back of the car was cut off and kind of tube framing how Formula D cars are. Has a teeny tiny fuel cell, which on E85, which this car is, is a pain because you got to refill it constantly. Um, looks like it was built for a bigger fuel cell too, but I don't know anything about that. Car has a bunch of iterations, but super jankly put together right now. And it's been sitting forever. And this is just kind of the life cycle of a Formula D car is they have to be stored inside. Uh, they have to be stored inside. They take a lot of care. When you run them, they use a lot of consumables. And once someone gets sick of it, uh, if they don't have indoor storage and long-term plans for the thing, Formula D cars regularly just sit outside and kind of rot once they're done with their lifespan. And if they're not collectible or expensive enough to deal with. And that's, that's what happens with a lot of these things. And they get recycled by Pro-Am drivers and they get poor quality parts put on them and worse craftsmanship, I guess you could say, because those guys are learning. Um, and it's kind of a downhill, downhill spiral most of the time. But it is what it is. It's not a big, uh, big deal. Uh, some key points of this car. You can see a lot of, I'll let you judge what this is. Boop, boop, boop. the type of craftsmanship. You can see the welds all just like breaking and falling apart places from that plate being welded on. I didn't pre-look at this, by the way. I just kind of jumped out and started filming this. So this doesn't have any planning and I don't do multiple takes. They did stitch weld it. But what's funny is when you stitch weld a car, you're trying to make it stronger and stuff. A lot of the stitch welds kind of blew through. Um, but if this was the type of welding they did on the car and stuff, stitch welding really doesn't matter and it's not holding the chassis together. The roll cage is. Car has a big angle kit on it. it. Was rubbing there. It was kind of interesting as most modern drift cars have a bent tension rod or something to get through there, but it was rubbing on both the tension rod and the sway bar. Old school parts kind of thing put together. Everything's rusty and just corroding and needs a lot of love. This is interesting to hold the fenders on. Standoffs there. Hmm. Let's look at more little details. Firewall was quite mangled to fit stuff and cut there. What else? I like finding little things with cars that are goofy. A lot of corrosion on that rack. Probably have to replace the rack. Kind of looks like the rack is bent from this angle too. You can see a lot of distortion there where the car was wrecked, it looks like. I'm not sure if that's, it kind of looks like 
that was all wrecked. Those bolts definitely aren't supposed to be like that. That could just be pounded out for more wheel clearance. That rocker panel's heavily damaged. That's not a big deal though. Let's see what else is back here. This car just sits with water in it for, I mean, this car has been back here for years full of water. That can't be good for the chassis. Something to note for the driving. Uh, look at all the bodywork just lying here too. Broken and abandoned. Um, because this wasn't sealed up, if you go and drift and you even make a moderate amount of smoke off these tires, because the over fender just fits over here and does nothing here, this car fills with smoke so bad you wouldn't be able to see out of it, which is a huge problem. I might actually have some pictures of it filling up with smoke somewhere. Um, but all this is kind of willy-nilly cut out and you absolutely don't need to do that when you're building a drift car. You should keep the inside of the car completely sealed for the like comfort of the driver and so that he can see outside the car when drifting because he won't be able to see once it fills with smoke. Same thing with a lot of these little holes in the chassis. Kind of have to plug all that up if you're gonna make Formula D smoke. Mm, look at all this craftsmanship. Kind of glob it on. Hope for the best. Pretty sure I can just bend this off and break it if I tried. Oh, look at that. That's a super secure bolt. Holding the fuel tank in. That's hilarious. There's almost nothing left there. That's not a big deal. That's just a little firewall piece. Hmm. Dune buggy status. The, oh, I forgot about this too. This car was inside an accident inside of a trailer too, which caused a lot of damage to the chassis. Do, 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 do. Anyways. Kind of just gives you an idea of looking around an old Formula D chassis. This wasn't a super in-depth video or anything. I just thought it'd be kind of funny to look at stuff. The craftsmanship of some of the cars in Formula D back then, but it's still fun to look at. Oh, there we go. There's another complete break in all the welds around there. Do you see that? I wonder if that one's broken too. That looks like it's cracked all the way around there. Let me zoom in. You can't really see it in the video, but it's cracked as well as right there up the side. Mm -hmm. That step doesn't look like it's good for performance with the exhaust hitting that right off the turbo and making a mess of the exhaust flow. I wonder how much that would actually matter. I guess as, ch as chassis are getting old, but one of the problems with this car is it would be hard to revitalize and bring back because there's so much deferred maintenance on it. Like you would need a new rack. You'd probably want to redo all the control arms on the car, probably redo the fuel cell. You'd probably, if you look at this, I mean, you want to redo any craftsmanship that has anything to do with welding because all the welding is so bad on this thing. Look at this. Like that's a piece of welding wire right there. And this pulled away and it's just for a fastener. And this doesn't really hold any weight. All it's doing is holding on a fender. But like anywhere there's stitch welding and stuff, there's little pieces of welding wire. I mean like it only takes, look at that. I can just break it off and now it's gone. But that looks terrible for welding wire sticking out of your stuff everywhere. What else is there to look at? I like picking stuff apart for fun. 
There they even blew through the chassis when welding. And there's no penetration there. Well, I shouldn't say penetration. There's just, I don't even know what to call that. Mess. So I guess you could also say when modifying a car like this, there's a lot of, like this could be someone's first time welding. It doesn't matter. And the car still function really well. But this type of craftsmanship, I don't know what you would do to save this chassis at this point and move it forward because most likely someone wanting to build a really nice car would probably start from scratch. Mm. But even, I don't know, it's a weird thought because it still worked really well in drift. I mean, if you have a Jay-Z and you have all the parts, the worst part about it was things broke all the time. Oh, there's a bunch of broken welds that you can't see. I can't really get down there easily on the, uh, on the hydro. That's for a side skirt attachment. Oh man, I just saw this. There's just straight holes in the chassis too. That must have been for another one of these types of attachments down there. There's just a hole in it now. Same thing right there. Just holes in the chassis. Frame rails messed up back there. Frame rails don't really seem to matter that much in 240SXs, but that's still super jacked up. You see all the crushing and stuff everywhere. Mostly though, that's just a sad sight. Almost all 240SXs are crushed right there. Poor little dude. Oh, there we go, it opens. Water, oh, there's algae in there and stuff too. That's hilarious. Ow, I just got a dash in the head. They painted over the zip ties, that's funny. Oh my God, I just realized, look at that. They painted over the pedals too. Not all of that is off the first owner or anything either. I'm just pointing out fun stuff. A lot of that would have been by a previous people that got the car and reused it and stuff. And uh, it's just funny. That's all. Thanks guys. Bye. And thank you to all the sponsors such as Valino Tires, BC Racing Custom Coilovers, Spec Clutches, GK Tech, NK Wheels, ECU Master, NRG, and What Monsters Do. I hope you guys enjoyed this, poking around an old car that's kind of been used and abused and at the end of its life. Kind of fun to see what it's like after all these years of beating on it through Formula D and Pro-Am and everything else this car's done. I hope it well. Bye, everybody.